Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I show you how to take a photo and make it into a cartoon or paint. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli, and I make two free tutorials per week. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, France. Click here if you want to get the raw file that I'm going to give you for free if you follow this tutorial, and click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In last episode, I show you an example of interior design retouching of the Hotel Abbaye in Paris. Check it out if you like interior design. This week, I'm going to show you how to take this photo, retouch it completely, and then put it into Topaz Simplify 4 to turn it into like a comic book type of look or a water painting type of look. It's a really cool plugin, and I really urge you to check it out. Also, just before I do the tutorial, I want to announce that at the end of this tutorial, I have a full presentation of my new 2014 workflow. It is 20 projects of how I work today with Lightroom 5 latest features and Photoshop CC latest features. It's the biggest tutorial I ever done because usually it's like seven to eight projects. This is like 20 projects, all in full HD and iPad video format. All right, let's get to the tutorial and let me show you how we make this special effects using Topaz Simplify 4. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So to be able to follow along with this tutorial, I uh, advise you to download Topaz Simplify at least, or you can download everything. All you have to do is go to News, Topaz, and if you use this link, you can get 15% off by using the code PHOTOSURGE as you check out if you want to buy Topaz Simplify, which we're going to be using today. Uh, I'm going to use Photoshop as my host for this software, but if you only have Lightroom, you can also download for free Topaz Fusion Express, which will give you the possibility to use uh, Lightroom as your host directly with Topaz instead of using Photoshop. But I did not install it, so I'm going to be using Photoshop. So here I am in Lightroom is one of my favorite photo of Paris. Uh, it's the stairs in Montmartre, very hidden stairs, and it's the only stairs in Montmartre where you can also have the sunset in the same time. And you will see what I mean in a second when these raw files becomes unretouched. So I'm going to open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. Isn't that amazingly surprising? Then uh, I'm going to lower a bit the exposure because I find the overall photo is too bright. And I'm going to take care first of the of the sky here before doing my blacks and whites. Black and whites is supposed to give you the full range. It's supposed to give you the full contrast from very dark to very white. But if you've got you know, too much dynamic range and a too bright of a sky, it's kind of good to go and uh, go to exposure, minus your exposure and do a little graded filter on the sky first so that you kind of bring everything back into range before you do the whites and the blacks. And to do the whites and the blacks, you hold on the Alt key, you move to the right, everything becomes dark until you move, you move until you find something that becomes white. Then you know you've reached what we call a white point. Now back it down, you don't want anything burned because all these white points, if I go further, I totally burn. So I'm gonna back it down like this, and that's my white point. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with a black point, but on black point, I don't care, I can go further. It's all white, and this texture which is appearing in black is fine. I want something like this. I want about 5% of texture appearing so that I have some nice dark areas. And see, all of a sudden, uh, let me show you the before and after, we've got like all the contrast back. You know, her histogram now is fully developed. Okay, from dark to light. Next, uh, let's add some clarity and some vibrance because I'm gonna go for a color uh, full painting look. And um, now for shade, uh, for, sorry, for the white balance, I'm gonna go to shade, but uh, because you know I wanna warm, so there was a really nice sunset, but there's a bit too much green in that sunset, so I'm gonna add a bit of magenta and I might add a bit of blue to take out some of the yellow, just a little bit. So I kind of like that result. And now, let's go to the uh, lens correction. Let's on about profile correction, remove chromatic correction because this is what I do all the time. It doesn't really matter for what we're gonna be doing because we're really gonna go for a painting look. And let's click on auto. That's one is very important to make this whole photo straight. See how everything is straight. I love that option. And let's use the crop tool and crop away what we are not going to be using. Something like this. There's a lot of graffitis going on here, but uh, I'm gonna leave it on. It's for the comic book look we are going for. It's kind of kind of cool for the water, for the water painting look. It's kind of not cool, but you know you can always take it out in Lightroom. And next, I just want to take you see. There's like some garbage there. I just use a quick 
uh, spot removal to, oops, I'm sorry. I did something wrong there. Let's go back to the develop module. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Okay, I'm just gonna paint over some of the trash. People are leaving trash in such a beautiful area. It's a crime, it is not nice. Okay, uh, I'm just, you know, I don't really care how it's being done. I just, I just don't want, you know, some sort of plastic bag to appear in my comic or cartoonish look at the end. Okay, now that's the basic look I'm going for. Maybe, maybe add a little bit more contrast to it. And maybe, maybe, maybe do some postcard vignetting, something like that. And maybe, maybe even lower a little bit exposure to get it a night feeling, you know, like, and let's go then for a little Monet type of look or a little comic book look. Let me show you the before and the after. This is really one of my nicest photos in Paris. I'm actually giving you the raw file so you can see by yourself. And it's a really cool photo. I really like it. I would retouch it differently if it was for print. You know, I don't, I, don't, I would not do this full clarity that I did. You know, I would do like more selective clarity because this is what I do now. And uh, and voila, but it's, and you know, maybe I would do some dodge and burn around the the uh, the lamps there. But anyways, today I'm here to show you some painting stuff. So edit, edit Adobe Photoshop CC. Now you don't have to do that if you're installed Topos, Topaz Fusion Express 2, because you can use it directly from Lightroom, but I did not install it. So I'm gonna um, duplicate the background, yes, and go to filter, um, Topaz Lab, Topaz Simplify 4, the return of Topaz, okay? And when you come to the software, I'm basically only gonna use the global adjustment. Now let's go first for the sort of comic book cartoonish look. So for this, I'm just gonna to go to the simplify mode and instead of having a combined mode, I'm gonna have an edge mode. So that means that I have a white canvas and I'm only gonna see the edges if I go to the edge uh, uh, window here. Now on the edge window, it's very easy. All you have to do is move edge strands and what it does, it's, it, it does a bit, uh, something like that. It does a bit what I did, uh, what I showed a couple of weeks ago, uh, this action to get the drawings uh, automatically, but this does it way better than just this, what I showed you a couple of weeks ago. That's why I wanted to do this tutorial. Now, the, uh, you see all the edges are in color. I don't like that. So you have the possibility to try, you got color edges, fine, normal, color line, fine. Uh, just, I'm gonna go to the mono edge, normal, for example. Pretty good. Uh, or let's go for mono edge, fine. Uh, it's just different type of edges or different type of ink, you could say. Mono line, normal. Uh, eh, line is not bad. Monoline normal is not bad. I think I'm going to go for monoline on this one. It's much, much more detail. Then you've got simplify edge. When you move simplify edge to the right, you're going to simplify it. You're going to actually, let's move it a lot further. Uh, you're going to take out some of the, uh, of the smallest edges. So maybe something like that can be cool. And so more you go to the right on edge trends, more you get details on everything. Okay. Maybe I'm gonna fatten and then reduce weak, reduce small, and uh, these two are, reduce weak is gonna basically reduce the weak edges, the smallest ones, it's gonna take them out. Don't necessarily want that. Or, oops, sorry, I moved the, the wrong slider. Simplify the edge. I mean, you can get really crazy on this, okay? So the two lines you're gonna be using is really edge, trench, and simplify edge, okay? and then. The one I use also, it would be like fat and edge, just to make the edges a little bit fatter, something like this, maybe not that much, just halfway through. And voila, so that's the ink I was going for. Now, all I have to do is go back to the simplified mode and use combined. I could have done it in combined mode, but I kind of wanted to see the edge for what they were. So right now the edge is just over the photo, it's kind of weird, it's not the look I'm going for. So let's go to simplify, and this is gonna be really easy because Honestly, the really only sliders I'm gonna be using here is simplify size, check this out. All simplify is gonna do is gonna go for the sort of a watercolor painting and it's gonna add, it's just gonna, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna make it look more like a painting but with the ink on top of it, it makes like a comic or cartoon book, a cartoon look, okay? Uh, then you can go to adjust maybe and just add a little bit of brightness because it's a bit dark now. So you have to watch on the adjust, I find that they're very strong. Maybe add a little bit of contrast, but you have to go very gentle. These sliders, 
look at this contrast already. Okay, let's put it back how it was. This it's kind of weird. Okay, uh, I did something weird. So all right, I don't know what I did, but I did something weird. So I'm gonna take adjust off for now. Uh, sorry, I'm actually gonna reset adjust. Something with here when we are there. Adjust. Okay, to put it back how it was, I just wanted to add brightness. That's all I wanted to. Something when we are on the settings. It went berserk. Something like that. Uh, maybe a little bit of saturation. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't do that in uh, in Topaz because I'm so much used to the, uh, you know, the looks, the uh, Lightroom or Photoshop, you know, curve and stuff. I would do it in uh, in there. But anyways, that's the look I was going for. That's the comic book sort of cartoonish look. So let's click on OK and it's gonna process the photo and put it on its own layer. That's why I also wanted to use Photoshop so it was easy for me to show you different version. And uh, I'm gonna put on pause because it's gonna take about a minute uh, to process. Okay, so this is a final result, a very comic book type of look. This is the before, this is the after. It's, uh, I think it's really fun. It's, it can be cool to use, uh, I, I'm, I'm doing a little short movie and I think I'm gonna use this to make the movie poster because I wanted to give you like a cartoon feeling to it. Okay, now I'm gonna double click the background, Command J to duplicate the layer, put it on top, and let's try something else. We've got the basic retouching, which I like. Let's go to Filter, Topaz Lab, Simplify 4. And uh, now let's go for like a more impressionist looking, uh, Monet, I would say, or not, not Monet, I don't wanna, I don't want to upset anyone, but uh, like a watercolor, uh, nice thing. So on this one, it's a lot easier. I just go straight to, uh, sorry, simplify, and just simplify size. I don't do the edge. I don't do the edge. Okay, there's a little, it has to process, and voila. All I do is simplify, and I get this sort of like water painting type of look. Might uh, boost some details back in there, just to uh, make it a bit more crisp, something like that. Uh, I had a friend I was doing painting and honestly, they were very similar to that. And maybe a little bit of detail boost. So usually you would just play around with that. Now future boost is gonna give you the weirdest result in the world, check that out. What it does, it just alters the color and it's just, I never find anything pleasing with it. So I always put it down to zero. It's really weird, I don't know what, that's, they should took that, take that slider off. Future, um, okay, maybe a little bit more detail so that it's, uh, Something like that, you know, maybe a little more detail. Okay, and then you can change the detail size or remove the small detail size. Remove small details. Remove weak details, you know. Okay, I think I will uh, maybe back it down a little bit. Well, you just have to play around and find something that you like. Something like that, detail strands. And I just want to give a sort of a water. No, actually, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to make it even more watercolor, something like that. So I really want to go for the painting look, and I'm just going to add a bit more details to it. Something like that. And uh, and voila, that's, so it's a complete different look. The first one we did was more like, because it had the ages, it was more like a comic or comic thing. I mean, it is, a, you know, just a little trick, but honestly, I think it works really well with that photo. And so try it if you've got like very nice, colorful photos, because, you know, comic books or paintings are often very colorful. So it, you know, it's, if you take a very washed out photo, it's not gonna work, okay? So let me just put on pause while it is processing, and then we'll look at both final results. Okay, so this is the final result. That's the water painting sort of, and that's the comic version, water painting color version, and that's the original photo. So I think I like more the color painting. Maybe I should have done it a bit brighter, but you can always, you know, add a little curve to it, uh, a little curve and uh, make it a bit brighter. I think it would, something like this, maybe just add a little spot here and bring down the darks. No, 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 not so much. Yeah, something like this with a little curve. Well, not even, not even. Anyways, I like the result and uh, voila. And now let me show you a little introduction to my full workflow 2014. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm happy to announce that my new 
2014 full complete workflow is out. Last year I did a course which was two seven eight videos about my complete workflow using Lightroom 4 and at the time Photoshop CS5. Since then Lightroom 5 came out, Photoshop CC came out and I have also updated my workflow. I work a bit different now than I did about a year ago. Last year I showed you about seven to eight projects. This year I'm going to show you 20 projects from A to Z with all the raw files, how I retouch every single photo. I'm a strong believer that more you practice your retouching skill, better you become. Every photo is unique, every photo has its own white balance, its own histogram. Even though the workflow is kind of similar, I really learned by watching people uh, retouching over and over and over. So I, that is why I did 20 projects, so you can see Every photo is unique, every being is unique, everybody has got his own viewpoint, so it's important so that you have the raw file so you can, you know, also look at it your way and go into some other directions than what I did. Some of these projects are some of my best photos of Paris, taken during the workshop of Paris in spring a few weeks back. I'm really proud of these photos, a lot of them went very high up on 500px, got lots of great reviews, so I'm sure you will love it. If you purchase this bundle, you will also get for free last year workflow bundle. So thank you very much for your trust. I get a lot of emails from you guys that you appreciate my training and it really gets me going. I hope you will like this one. I put a lot of heart into it, a lot of passion, and I hope it's gonna get your retouching to the next level. I'll see you in the training video. Au revoir.